Sorry, we'll start to open up our flow controller, or we can close it. You can see I've managed to stop it there at five. I can increase it a little bit more and stop it at six. So there's so many different spots here that we can change and play with. But yeah, by opening that up, we've got heaps of pressure. There you go, we've got over 10 bar of pressure going onto that coffee puck. And if we have a look at our gauge down the bottom here, there you go, it's equalizing. Today, we're gonna to install a quick mill flow control, which is for an E61 head into the new Rubino Plus. I'll show you how to do it manually yourself and talk about why you would look at putting one of these into your machines as a home barista. You may have heard about flow control, but if you haven't, let me give you a quick rundown. Very commonly, a lot of coffee machines have an E61 head, and at the top, they have a fixed restrictor. Now, this flow control will replace the mushroom in the top of an E61 head and allow you to vary the pressure that then goes through the E61 head onto your coffee bed. And it's a pretty simple process to do, so I want to take you through it. And when you do change that top head, you've basically got a, a dial on here which can increase or decrease that flow from the max or minimum pump pressure that you have. So if you had a rotary machine, you might be getting nine bar and you can increase or decrease that. But if you've got a vibration pump like this um, Rubino Plus here, it will naturally ramp up from maybe three or four depending on the back pressure you have and then you can get to full nine bar and have a variation. And you think, well, how can I uh, actually understand what's happening? Well, this kit gives you everything you need, including a gauge, which we're gonna screw straight into the front of your E61, and that will tell you what pressure is on the coffee bed. So that's really handy, because you can do some uh, comparison between the pump pressure and what's actually being applied to your coffee. The kit comes with this little guide here, which is nice and easy. It shows you what you've got to remove and the parts you've got to replace, so that this can work properly in home. Now, if you're not technically savvy, maybe get a local tech to better put one of these in for you because it is pressure. So if we don't seal this up properly and it comes out, you do risk that gauge, maybe spitting a bit of hot water or something out the front here. So I've got a few little tips and, and things to show you how to do that properly. And like I said, just be careful. If you're not handy, maybe get someone else to do it and then you'll be perfectly safe. So the first thing you need to make sure your machine is turned off and totally cold and it is depressurized. If you're not sure about how to do that, turn the machine off, open up your lever and open up your steam and your hot tap and make sure that nothing's coming out of there. Because if you do have pressure in this machine, the moment you remove your top head or this screw, it will squirt at you. So that is, you've got to be very safe. I want to stress that as much as I can. Make sure your machine's cold make sure you do not do this when it's hot. So be safe, please. And you're gonna need a couple of tools. So we're gonna use a large adjustable spanner here to be able to undo the top mushroom and the bottom exhaust as well. We're going to need a number five Allen key to be able to undo this um, little hex head bolt that's in the front. This is very common if you do open up uh, this in your machine and it isn't drilled all the way through then you may have to get um, a drill and drill a pilot hole there But uh, hopefully that we're going to open this up that that won't be the issue And if you don't have some sort of liquid loctite, which I would highly recommend you could use a bit of thread tape um, But this is definitely the best option to be able to do this job and make it nice and safe So we're going to remove the mushroom to start with up the top here, there's two parts. We want to remove the whole mechanism. So it's chrome, so be nice and gentle. If you're worried, you can pop a little cloth on or something. But as soon as you've cracked it, just use your fingers and it's nice and safe. Now, oh, there you go. Once you unscrew it, you, it does pop out and there is a spring in here. So this is a whole section that you can pop away and keep separate for if you ever want to reverse this back. And we've got our flow controller now. So it's important to make sure that we do have this um, white nylon washer in place. And just before I install this, just to let you know, this um, is a brass um, mechanism that's then chrome plated. So the price point of this is a little bit lower than some of the other stainless steel ones on the market, but exceptionally great value to be able to have that flow control. So we're gonna pop this in, make sure that the spring is in the middle of the mushroom. You can see here, it's just off to the side, so we're just gonna wiggle that a little bit. There we go, and it's spring-loaded, so we need to press that down and tighten it up at the same time. 
Okay, so there we go. Now I'm just going to tighten up this brew head. Okay, so that's got that nylon washer nice and secure. Now I'm going to come back and look at this in a moment, but you can adjust this. So this is opening and this is closed. So depending on where you're standing, actually I'll do it right now. <laughs> in the kit, you get a small little Allen key. Now, think about how you're gonna use the machine. You might be left-handed or right-handed, so you've got a bit of an adjustment here. By undoing this little grub screw in under here, you can change the position of where this finishes. So at the moment, we are all the way closed. This is all the way open. So depending on where you wanna to be to finish, you can adjust it. So I'll just quickly undo this little Allen key grub screw and you can see we've got the ability to move that wherever we choose. So for me, I'm gonna finish it just facing at the front, the best that thread allows me to. There we go. So I know that this is closed, that is closed and that is open. There you go. And that fits nice and looks in good alignment. So I'm just gonna work my way down through uh, this E61 head to make sure that we get all the parts put in order. The next thing is to remove this Allen key um, screw in the front here. There we go. Hey, don't drop them. <laughs> all right, don't lose that one. You will need that again if you ever want to put this back uh, to normal. So we've got our gauge here and would pop a little bit of Loctite seal on this. There we go. Don't go too crazy, just enough to get it on the thread there. There we go. So I'm going to screw that in and naturally there is a white nylon washer that's already in there. Now the key to this process is actually getting the gauge to line up once it's tight. So we want to get that thread lined up, screw it in. So we want to get this lined up in the right spot. You don't want to have a gauge upside down. So once you get it feeling firm and you've got that Loctite on there, make sure it's lined up nicely and let that set. Sorry for interrupting, I hope you're enjoying the content and thanks for watching. Have you seen our Home Brewster Manual? This thing has everything in it that we talk about through our YouTube channel as a guide that you can use at home and implement simply to make amazing espresso. It doesn't matter if you've got an entry level machine like this or a high end coffee machine from Italy, it's gonna take your espresso to the next level. We cover things like dialing in a specific recipe for your machine, using some of these really cool tools to eliminate uh, channeling and getting better extraction yields. You're gonna be able to learn how to froth silky milk and pour amazing latte art so that you can impress all of your friends. This um, also has how to clean your machine and care and maintenance. The manual's available on our website as a digital download worldwide. Use the code YTBarista10 and you'll save 10% off our already discounted price. Do yourself a favor, go and download it now. Now the last part we need to do is have the exhaust work from a lower pressure. So normally this um, mechanism works by the spring for nine bar of pressure. But if you then release your handle and you might have only allowed it to be maybe three bar of pressure, you want that exhaust pressure to come out the bottom. So you do have to change the spring. Now if you pull this set apart, make sure you don't get them messed up because the top spring is different to the bottom springs. Now it's easier to take the drip tray out to give yourself a little bit more room. And we're gonna be taking this whole exhaust out, okay? So it is from the top section that we're going to just pop out tool on and then again undo by your hand and we won't be scratching any of that beautiful chrome all right so here is the section that we want to change we've got our piston which activates the water when we move the cam for the lever so don't lose that one we want to put this spring aside straight away and we want to get our little um, brass fitting as well so keep that as a matching set and then we'll pop in the replacement kit. Okay, pop that back together. And then 
We just need to screw it back in. There's a bit of pressure there just to get that spring to allow that thread to go up. There you go, once you get it, pretty easy. And we'll give that a little tighten. So we'll pop on our machine, and this is the Rubino Plus. When you think, well, what is the Plus? We've talked about the Rubino or the Black and Timber, Timber Rubino before. Well, the Plus has the new PID controller with digital shot timer. So if you have a quick look in here, we can see that we've got our um, digital PID, which allows us to change the temperatures, and you'll see that starting to heat up. As we pull our lever, it becomes a shot timer. So that's super handy. Um, so you don't have to have a scale or another timer to be able to make your adjustments or, or track your recipes. And you've got the really big large gauge here and it's a double gauge. So it's got the steam pressure and the pump pressure. So that's why we chose to fit a machine that does have our um, pressure um, being measured through the flow controller. We can see what the pump's applying and also what is coming through the head. So if your machine doesn't have a pump gauge on there, you may think twice about maybe putting a, a pressure on here because you haven't got an accurate um, uh, reading to tell you what the pump's giving to what the head's giving. Or you might just look at it and think, well, I have no idea what pressure's being applied to the coffee. So I do want this kit to be able to see that kind of pressure because you can't go back and install a pump pressure gauge very easily. That's actually quite hard to do. Now one little tip that everyone forgets to do, when you turn your machine on and off, it's best to actually open up your steam valve, just to push any of that air out, because some machines have pressure stats in them and they don't know whether it's steam pressure or water pressure that is built up inside here or, or air pressure as well. So little tip is once steam comes out of there, turn off the steam tap and then you're pretty close to being able to make your coffee. Now for this example, I don't need hot steamy water to be able to demonstrate this because we're looking at the water pressure. So we can now start to test this machine straight away. If we have a look here, as we activate our pump by pulling up our lever all the way, the pump is activating. We can see that it's making its way up to nine bar pressure. However, we haven't got this valve open. We've got it closed. So there's no water coming through. As we open this up, it's gonna allow the water to come through that brew head. Here we go. So we just needed to prime that for the first time. But you can see now, if I turn that off, we've got no pump pressure coming through. If we increase it, we can get full flow. So at the moment, there's nothing reading off the gauge. It's just opening and closing the valve. Now, the only reason, the only way we're gonna get a pressure reading from here is by having a coffee bed or back pressure coming through into this brew chamber to give us a reading. So for this example, I'm gonna grab a cleaning blind basket and pop it in. And that'll give us a very accurate reading because what we're trying to look at is, are we um, checking to, to see that the machine has good pump pressure through the head and back pressure? And we can do that with a blind basket. Once we sort of get an understanding of, the, of where the gauge might be to give us the pressure to the head, you then are required to change your grind and your dose to get that dialed in correctly. So once you get to flow control, grind and dose and the expansion, expansion of that coffee puck becomes paramount to be able to getting this gauge to work properly and get the consistency. All right, so let's pop this in and we'll see what it gives us. So we'll pop on our pump, which gets us up to nine bar. We'll start to open our globe, our gauge here. So, sorry, we'll start to open up our flow controller or we can close it. You can see I've managed to stop it there at five. I can increase it a little bit more and stop it at six. So there's so many different spots here that we can change and play with. Be able to opening that up, we've got heaps of pressure. There you go, we've got over 10 bar of pressure going onto that coffee puck. And if we have a look at our gauge down the bottom here, there you go, it's equalizing. So that shows you that with a vibration pump, um, these days they tend to set them a little bit higher um, because it does ramp on pressure, starting at a very low pressure. Once that water hits the coffee bed, it gets a back pressure to um, ramp up with the pump. So 
a lot of them do go a little bit over um, that 10 bar now. Some of them up to 15 bar actually. Um, it used to be set at nine, but we always wanted that little bit of extra, which just wasn't happening. So it's okay that that pump is set to, to 10 bar, but you could, if you wanted specifically nine bar pressure, you can now adjust that perfectly onto your coffee bed. You can see now that the steam is starting to come out from the rear old oh, HX boiler there. So I'm just gonna turn that off and we are at 101 degrees. The digital PID in this machine set to 122. Once that's fully reached, we know we're up to temperature to be able to brew coffee. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is if you've got this extra pressure that's coming into this head and you're not going to release it, there is a pump expansion valve that may go off and in most machines they do come down into the drip tray. So it's just down the bottom here to point that out. So if water does come out of here, it's not a big deal, especially if you're playing with a flow controller because the pressure's gotta go somewhere. If that continues to leak, you may want to bring it into a service agent to get that looked at. So there you have it, a very easy way to mod your HX coffee machine. Now it doesn't matter if it's a single boiler, dual boiler, or a HX like this, as long as this is the design you have, this kit will fit it very easily. So the one thing I do say is make sure you understand coffee because now you're introducing another element of flow and pressure that can open up some beautiful range of flavors uh, in low pressure or high pressure when you're looking at either single origins or perhaps that darker roast coffee. And it's a great adventure to go on. You'll be able to dial in coffee perfectly. Just make sure that you understand your recipe, your grind before you start to play with flow control and then you'll be able to assess uh, whether you're making a good or a negative change to the roast and the beans that you've got in front of you. If you're in Australia, these are available on our online store, so you can jump on and we'll ship those ones straight out to you. If you've got a question about flow control, pop a comment down below and I'll happily answer that because it is a really great, exciting area to play in and I know that there are so many questions out there. Anyway, thanks very much for watching us. We really appreciate it. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.